Welcome with commissioners and viewing public to the video tour of the Willamette Intake Facilities Construction Site. My name is Christina Walter and I'm the Permitting and Outreach Manager for the Willamette Water Supply Program. On this tour, we will take a look at the progress being made on the planned improvements of the Willamette Intake Facilities and also the Willamette Water Supply System at large. We will also explain how these projects will improve the reliability and resiliency of, of this critical water supply assets. With me today is Andre Tomey, Program Construction Manager. Following this tour for the WIF Commission, we'll post this on our social media page to educate the public. For our viewing public that needs a, a refresher, the Willamette Intake Facilities, or WIF, is the water supply infrastructure on the Mid Willamette River in Wilsonville. It is the sole intake that currently provides water for Wilsonville and Sherwood, but will also provide water for the Tualatin Valley Water District and the cities of Hillsborough and Beaverton starting in 2026. In addition, the city of Tigert is a partner in the WIF. These communities came together in an unprecedented regional partnership to oversee the WIF construction, its maintenance, and operations the starting point for the reliable and resilient drinking water supply for the region. Let's start our tour with safety. This video is in fact in many ways a safety item since the Willamette water supply system construction sites are so restricted right now due to COVID-19. Andre, could you please tell us more? Thank you, Christina. And that's right. Safety has always been our primary focus on the construction sites. But now the COVID rules and requirements are requiring even more oversight and continuous updating as the situation changes. And unfortunately, current procedures and the risks from the virus uh, are making site tours impractical at this time. Uh, now, as you can see in the video, uh, some of these shots were taken uh, at various times of the COVID pandemic and uh, face coverings may or may not have been a requirement at that time, but now maintaining physical distance and face coverings and gloves at all time and wearing PPE uh, is required on site. Uh, and these requirements uh, that we implement on site largely follow the guidance from the CDC and OHA and Oregon OSHA. However, implementing these procedures on a construction site uh, does take constant vigilance uh, because of the nature of the construction work, which encourages people to work together closely to complete their tasks. And occasionally contractors do have to get creative on how to do their work efficiently and maintain productivity while keeping each other safe. Uh, fortunately, we haven't had any forced work stoppages due to the COVID pandemic. Part of the reason is that the WWSS is considered critical infrastructure and our construction personnel are essential workers. And we take this responsibility seriously in regards to both keeping workers safe and keeping a small part of the economy moving normally. Okay, Christina, let's move on from safety and learn more about this unique site and take a virtual tour. First, let's start with a little bit of background um, on improvements we're about to see, specifically regarding seismic resiliency. A team of some leading seismic engineers, geologists, and planning professionals are helping the WWSS to create a seismically resilient water system that can withstand a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. These intense shaking events historically are 9.0 seismic events. Here's a clip from a recent interview of a member of our planning team conducted that explains more about planning for seismic resiliency for the water system. Uh, the hazard there is uh, when, when uh, ground shaking occurs uh, from the earthquake, these soils uh, have a tendency or will uh, lose significant strength. Um, and uh, that's a process that we sometimes call liquefaction. Um, another, another way to look at liquefaction is that, you know, the materials kind of almost behave like a, a really, really thick fluid. Um, that uh, liquefaction um, has, uh, impacts the project in, in, in several ways. Uh, most important is uh, uh, the ground deformations that get imposed on the pipeline or the, the infrastructure. And um, these ground deformations occur from uh, whether it's settlement um, or slope instability, you know, slope movement, and then uh, uh, you know, probably more critical to, uh, you know, 
certain areas of uh, crossings of the river and streams, uh, a phenomenon we call lateral spreading, um, where where you get large mass movements towards towards the uh, the creeks and the rivers and. Any infrastructure, whether it's pipeline or, or, or manholes or, or, or you know, vaults, um, are actually subject to that ground movement, and, and that movement imparts significant loads on the pipeline. And, and, and that's really you know, kind of what's critical and one of the critical factors in, 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 in evaluating and, and designing a resilient system is to really kind of manage and, 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 and uh, these, these, these specific hazards. Let's help orient people uh, where the site is located. The Willamette intake facilities are located on the Willamette River, just about a half mile west of the I-5 bridge and about 12 miles upstream of Willamette Falls. The facilities consist of the river intake screens and intake pipeline and the raw water pump station structure on the riverbank. The intake screens themselves uh, which draw the water into the intake pipe and protect any fish from getting pulled into that intake are below ground and are connected to the pump station by a 76 inch uh, intake pipe. During a major seismic event such as a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake, the facilities must withstand the shaking of the earthquake and be able to restart operations shortly after the event so that water service to the partner agencies and their customers can be maintained. The Willamette water supply system work at this site includes modification of the intake screens in the river, changing the size to increase capacity and seismic resiliency. It includes seismically reinforcing the riverbank, seismically strengthening the existing raw water pump station, building a new electrical building and standby generators at the upper portion of the site, installing a portion of the Willamette water supply system's 66 inch diameter raw water steel pipeline that leads from Wilsonville to a new water treatment plant in Sherwood, including a tunnel beneath Arrowhead Creek. Work on these projects began in early 2020 and will continue through late 2024. As I mentioned, the 66 inch steel raw water pipeline needs to traverse beneath Arrowhead Creek. It'll do so inside another steel casing that gets tunneled below the creek. And here in the video, you can see excavation of a secant pile shaft. This is the sending shaft where the tunnel machine will start to bore under the creek. And in the video, you can see excavation, which will go down approximately 60 feet deep. And this secant pile shaft uh, makes it safe for workers and the tunnel machine uh, to be down 60 feet safely uh, while doing the work, which is expected to take up to two months. Part of the Willamette Water Supply Systems work includes an electrical building at the upper site. The foundation for this building sits on concrete piles that are drilled down into the earth, filled with concrete and rebar. These are called continuous flight auger piles. It's an interesting process where the auger drills down into the soil, and when it gets to depth, concrete is actually pumped down through the center of the auger as it spins itself up, removing soil, and then filling that gap with concrete. And then rebar is placed inside that concrete shaft. Now down at the lower site, ground improvements are the primary work that is happening now to stabilize the riverbank for, to withstand a seismic event. This is being done with both deep soil mixing and with jet grouting. Both of these methods stabilize that riverbank by mixing in cement with the existing soil to create a more stable block that will not slide towards the river or deform during a seismic event. The overall mass of soil that needs to get treated is actually a trapezoidal shape. Now, engineers have determined the depth that the columns need to go by looking at how strong or how weak the existing soil is and the existing soil layers. 
and that column reinforces a certain area. Now, to reinforce an entire block of soil, other columns are added, and they're added in a pattern that overlaps the circles to make sure that there's good mixing uh, between those columns. This technique minimizes the damage to the existing infrastructure, like the pump station, by keeping the soil contained along the riverbank. Deep soil mixing works with a six foot diameter auger like drill bit on a tracked construction rig, where, as you can see in the video here, that auger is drilled down into the soil to depth. In doing so, concrete grout is pumped down through the center of that drill rig, and it's being mixed mechanically into the soil to stabilize the soil. A long pattern of columns, in fact, 249 columns, uh, essentially are locked together in overlapping circles with depths from 28 feet deep down to 74 feet deep are drilled down into the soil. Both the jet grouting work and the deep soil mixing work need to occur directly adjacent to the existing raw water pump station. And the only way to get this ground improvement done in a way that didn't disturb that existing facility was to cut a road down along that riverbank to allow this large equipment to access this area for treatment. Now, in doing this excavation of this access road, it was important also to protect the trees in the area. And you can see in this video where tree protection sheet piles were driven to protect the roots of a very large cedar and maple tree complex. The jet grouting work is similar to the deep soil mixing, but instead of mixing the soil mechanically with a large diameter auger, a smaller auger is drilled down into the ground to the depth of treatment, and then cement grout is pumped through that auger, and as it spins, it pushes it out into the soil, essentially creating a column where the existing pore space and air and water space between the soil grains is filled with a cementitious grout, strengthening that soil mass. Very similar to the deep soil mixing columns, the jet grout columns overlap each other as well to ensure a continuous mass of treated area. In total, there's about 95 jet grout columns as part of this project along the riverbank. Some of the jet grout columns are installed at an angle, which can't be done with deep soil mixing. So the jet grouting is a critical part of stabilizing this riverbank and creating seismically improved soil mass at the exact shape that the engineers have determined is required. Now, when all of the deep soil mixing and jet grout columns are done, we need to make sure that they were done properly and that there was good mixing of cement and it's hard to tell that from the surface. So a core sample is taken with a drill rig pushing down the full depth of the column and pulling up a small diameter core that can be sent to a lab for testing to make sure that that mixed soil has achieved its required strength. Both the jet grouting and the deep soil mixing produce a lot of spoils as you can see, this is very dirty, muddy work. And these spoils, as they're produced and come to the surface, have to be pumped or hauled away by an excavator, dried out, allowing that water to evaporate and drain off. And then the soils can be hauled off site. So that concludes our video tour around the site. Christina, the scale of this work is massive. And the video gives us a good view of current activities as the crews finish off the stabilization work along the riverbank and then move on to other construction activities around the project. Okay, now to wrap this up, the completion of the built width is just the beginning of a long-term partnership of the regional partners. This partnership is centered around the delivery and commitment to the safe, reliable and cost-effective water services to a growing and thriving region. The WIF Commission was developed not only to address the immediate WIF construction and startup needs, 
but to look to the future and build on the strength of the multi-agency collaboration in support of Willamette River resiliency and its vitality as a drinking water source. Once the WIF is built and operating, the partners will continue together to provide expertise, resources, and science-based decisions to protect water quality and supply. This requires participating at some levels in what is happening both upstream and downstream of the facility. Thank you for joining us on this tour.